What if there had been no religion? Caution. Religion may be hazardous to your health. Dateline 10, 1095. A series of expeditions called the Crusades begins with the purpose of recovering the Holy Land from the Muslims and placing it under Christian control. According to historian R.W. Southern, little that is specifically Christian can be discerned in the manner in which the Crusades were conducted, for the Crusaders on numerous occasions behaved with extreme barbarism and brutality. Dateline 1349, in Basel, Switzerland, the entire Jewish community was hooded together into a barn, and then the barn was lit on fire, and all the Jewish individuals were killed. A month later in Strasbourg, France, 2,000 Jews were killed because they refused to convert to Christianity. Later the same year, 9,000 Jews were killed in two German cities. Dateline 1483, Tomas de Torquemada is appointed the first Grand Inquisitor in Spain. He lays down severe directions for the torture and execution of Christian persons refusing to convert from heresy and of non-Christians refusing to convert to Christianity. Galileo, who had revolutionized medieval thought about science and religion, supports and supplies evidence for the theory of Copernicus that the earth orbits the sun and not vice versa. For this threat to orthodoxy and to the authority of the church, Galileo is summoned before the church officials in Rome, humiliated, forced to recant his views publicly, and sentenced to live in strict seclusion for the rest of his life. Dateline, 1648, the Peace of Westphalia ends the bloodiest war in European history prior to the 20th century, and that was the Thirty Years' War. The war was fought between Catholics and Protestants, <coughs> largely on German soil, and 30% of the population of Europe lay dead. Dateline, 1692. In the summer months, 19 men and women, all having been convicted of witchcraft, are carried to Gallows Hill, a slope near Salem Village in Massachusetts, for hanging. After all, the Bible says to kill witches. And so they did. It's no better on the other side of the Atlantic, where 40 to 50,000 women suspected of witchcraft are all killed. Dateline, 1978, former Indiana pastor Jim Jones instructs the members of his cult in Jonestown, Guyana, to drink Kool-Aid laced with poison rather than submit to an upcoming congressional investigation of his religious operation there. 914 persons, over 200 of them children, commit suicide. Dateline, September 11, 2001, Muslim terrorists commandeer three domestic airplanes, crashing two of them into their targets, the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. The third plane, thanks to the heroic efforts of the passengers on board, crashes into a field in Pennsylvania. 3,025 persons are killed. In the face of these historic occurrences, is it any wonder that the obvious question is asked, what good is religion anyway? Wouldn't the world be quite simply better off without it? Isn't belief in God a dangerous delusion that prompts and promotes intolerance and oppression and violence? Even the most devout believer would be forced to concede that the barbarous atrocities are performed out of religious enthusiasm. So wouldn't the end of religion be a good thing? However, at the same time, religion has also made very positive contributions to the welfare of the world. So my announcement is, without religion, the world will not be saved. Dateline, 350 AD. All Christians of the early church, and especially the bishops, are charged to be, quote unquote, lovers of the poor. So the bishops of the church found hospitals and houses of care that are concerned especially with helping the poor. 
This will predate the work of Mother Teresa by 1,600 years. Dateline, 1844 in London, George Williams founds the YMCA based on his religious conviction that, quote, there should be an escape from the hazards of life on the streets, end of quote. His outreach extends across the rigid social classes of his time. The idea of the YMCA spreads to other countries, including the United States, which establishes its first YMCA in Boston. Dateline, 1851, the Reverend William Robertson and a group of local Presbyterians found Fulton College, later to be known as Westminster College. This founding of universities and colleges continues a long tradition of the church being involved in higher education. In fact, 106 of the first 108 colleges in the United States were founded by the church. And in 1860, about the time of the Civil War, there were 246 American colleges at the time, and 229 of them had been founded by church denominations. Dateline, 1863, in Geneva, the religious commitment of Jean-Henri Dulon, after witnessing the results of a war in Italy, prompts him to found the Red Cross to, and I'll quote him, protect human life and health and to prevent and alleviate human suffering, end of quote. And in 1881, Clara Barton establishes the American Red Cross. Dateline, 1865, William and Catherine Booth are disturbed by the neediness of many people in London. As people of faith, they set up what they called charity shops and engage in a mission to assist the poor. Their mission is entitled The Relief of Poverty. Today, the Salvation Army performs this mission and ministry in over 126 countries around the world. Dateline, 1962, actor Danny Thomas, based on his Lebanese, Maronite, Catholic, Heritage founds St. Jude's Hospital, which pioneers in finding cures and saving children suffering from pediatric cancer. St. Jude's motto becomes, no child should die in the dawn of life. Consequently, and to this day, no young person is denied treatment based on race, religion, or a family's ability to pay. Dateline, 1976, Millard Fullard and his wife, Linda, found Habitat for Humanity to build homes for people who would normally not have dwellings. Mr. Fuller, a millionaire at the age of 29 and a person of profound and deep religious faith, said this, quote, life is a gift and a responsibility. My responsibility is to use what God has given me to help people in the world. Habitat for Humanity has built shelters for 750,000 people. Dateline, March 2nd, 2013. Insofar as religion can move people outside themselves, insofar as world religions can motivate and inspire followers to be concerned for others and to live out the values of compassion, love, justice, and obedience, religion can make a positive contribution to the world. But what about the balance scales? Throughout history, has religion been more of an unhealthy factor or more of a healthy factor? Overall, and at the end of time, will religion have been evaluated in retrospect as positive or negative? In my opinion, it's too close to call. <laughs> only time will tell, only God knows for sure, and thus far both the divine judge and the final jury are silent under a gag order. No one knows the ultimate eschatological verdict, and certainly not me. But in the meantime, persons of faith and persons who are skeptical of faith can bring their united, critical scrutiny to what religions do in the world today. Where religion is healthy and promotes the common good, it ought to be recognized and valued. And where religion is unhealthy and promotes evil, it deserves to be criticized and to be held accountable. So regardless of our worldview, whether we stand up for religion, or whether we can't stand religion, it's now up to us.